I'm Nicole Lee for Tweet and Before You Buy, and here I'm reviewing the Sony Xperia Ion for AT&T. Now, the Sony Xperia Ion is a, uh, I would call it a mid-range Android smartphone, but just because it's mid-range doesn't mean it's full, doesn't mean it's not full of features. It comes with a um, 1.5 gigahertz dual-core uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon processor. It has a very nice 4.6-inch display. Um, it has a 1280 by 720 uh, resolution, which Sony calls the HD reality dis resolution, which is means it, it, it does look very good in um, indoor lighting. However, in um, outdoor lighting under bright sunlight, it does wash out quite a bit. Now, even though it has an older operating system on here, Sony has said that it is upgradable to ICS in the future. When in the future, I'm not quite sure, and I definitely hope it's sometime soon. Sony has its own proprietary um, UI on here called uh, Timescape. Um, the way I see it, it looks as if Sony was trying to make their own version of Gingerbit look more ice cream sandwich-y with the way the app drawer is, the, with the way the icons are sort of arranged and designed. I do think it's a little bit dated. I find it quite unrefined. I just wasn't really a big fan of the Timescape. Um, UI. I just find it really dated and kind of clunky. As for the phone's design itself, as you can see here, it's kind of a, the usual typical big blocky uh, smartphone design. Sort of an interesting curved back right here, very sort of squared off corners. Again, this is not really up to par with um, Sony's more recent smartphones like um, the Arc, which has a nice sort of clear th uh, see-through transparent uh, de design to it. This has a much more sort of old-fashioned, last-year design for Sony. And under the display, you do get the usual um, four Android uh, hot sensor keys to the menu, home, back, and search functions. On the side here, you get the usual um, USB port, as well as a micro HDMI port, which I'll get to later. On the side here is a power uh, screen lock key, as well as the volume keys. On the top here is the uh, headset jack. On the back is a 12-megapixel camera. And on the front above the display is a 1.3 megapixel front-facing camera for video calls. As far as the camera quality goes, I thought it was pretty good. Under reasonable, you know, daylight, sunny conditions, I thought the photos were okay. Maybe not the best photos I've ever seen from a phone, but definitely uh, good enough for me. I did think um, the low-light photos weren't that great. They seemed a little bit too noisy for my taste. The Xperia Ion has 16 gigabytes of internal memory as well as a micro SD card slot if you want to add more. Now, I did mention earlier that the Sony Xperia Ion comes with a micro HDMI port. Now, when you plug it up to a micro HDMI to HDMI um, cable, you will see a sort of a custom TV remote interface that lets you watch um, whatever's on your phone on a big screen television. It has a very it's a custom television launcher or remote control is interface. If you do not want to use the micro HDMI uh, cable that I mentioned earlier, there's also DLNA compatibility, so you can watch your videos wirelessly. Another interesting thing about the Xperia Ion is that it is PlayStation certified. So you could go to the PlayStation Store on Sony and download Sony games onto the Xperia Ion, like, like Crash Bandicoot and more. Now for the pros and cons of the Sony Xperia Ion. The pros. It has a very nice display. The 4.6 inch display is very nice and colorful. I thought the performance was quite speedy as well. The 4G LTE speeds are quite impressive. Another great pro of this phone is that it's only $49 with a new two year service agreement if you get it from Sony. If you get it from AT&T, it's around 100 bucks. So get it from Sony to save yourself some money. Uh, as for the cons of the Sony Xperia Ion, now I have a, quite a few cons on this one. This is definitely a personal uh, opinion right here. I find the design just a little bit too dated, a little bit too clunky for my taste. The fact that it comes with um, gingerbread instead of ice cream sandwich is a huge letdown for me. I know it's supposed to be like a budget $50 phone, but that is still to me a kind of a downside, especially since a lot of the budget smartphones these days come with ice cream sandwich already. Now for buy, try, or don't buy. I have to say this was a kind of a difficult decision. On the whole, I didn't really like the, the clunky old-fashioned design, and the older operating system threw me off. But that is only $50, so maybe it is good for some people depending on your budget. 
in the end, though, I have to go with my first initial gut instinct, and that is don't buy. Even for $50, I probably wouldn't get this Xperia Ion. I'm Nicole Lee. This has been a review of the Sony Xperia Ion.